Good evening and welcome to this evening's green room. Uh, this is this come from Flower Town tonight now because the flower has really kicked off in Cavan and really it's, we're coming from Cavan tonight because we have a very very special guest. If I say pulse, it might not mean a thing to you, but it means a lot to me. <laughs> but if I say Mama's boys, you know that my guest tonight is the legend that is Pat McManus. Pat, you're very very welcome. And Thanks a million, Paul. It's lovely to be here. It's fantastic to have you here on board. Now we're gonna we plead we pleaded with the, the powers that be to give us an hour, but they've only given us a half an hour because we're gonna get Pat on again to talk. For, but I want to go through this really quickly with Pat because I know Pat's history, but I know there's a lot of people out there that don't. Pat, you started way back when. Well, I'm not gonna even say the year because I know. It was yes. somewhere. It was, it was there or thereabouts. Uh, it's it's a long time ago now. It's, a long it's time funny. Ago. I, it's funny that uh, we're here on on flower flower weekend yeah. because I actually started out playing yes. traditional Irish music. There's a big. Uh, my father was a great uh, traditional player, and it goes back for generations in our family. So <laughs> so <clears throat> there was always. I suppose if you want for a better way, I started off on the violin. And there was always music in the house, but it was an eclectic mix of music because yes. Dad was born in New York, right? And he, he vividly remembers all the jazz bands and all the Dixieland bands right and stuff. all the different blues players playing, busking on the street. So when, when, when he came home from America, I think his, his mum brought home the only gramophone, I think, that was in the, in, in the townland in, in, in Derry Lynn at the time. Down to Derry Lynn. And they had all the records there. And they had all from everything from the ink spots right through to... So there was... A, you know, an eclectic mix of music always going on in the house. So I think maybe not alone the traditional thing went right through. That was his first love, and maybe uh, for all intents and purposes, it was my first love as well. But as you're growing up as a teenager, then you want to change tack. Yeah, of you course, know? yeah. You know, so. But uh, the the thing is, Pat, everybody thinks that rockers listen only to rock. No, not at all. You know, and it it, it it does cover the whole the whole spectrum, doesn't it? You yeah. know, like you said, they're jazz, the ink spots. You say ink spots to kids nowadays. They don't even know what ink is. Yes, well, they're they're the ink spots the band. <laughs> you know, <laughs> the original boy, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, no, you know, I mean, it comes from that that you listen to everything, and that's what brings you to. To what, to what? I think so. I think that's where you know uh, that's where a lot of the music uh, I, I was influenced. I wasn't aware that I was being influenced by it, but it, it's only later later years that actually it, it came out in the in the writing when we formed uh, the Mamas Boys, and and it, it was it was well we didn't form the band. The band was already there. It was you know, already there. We yeah. just decided we were going to change tact and play different instruments, you know, because John was a, a, an Indian pipe player and whistle player and barrel <laughs> player, and Tommy was a good barrel player. And, uh, and this I, is this is way back before these things were like they're in they're in the mainstream now. Ah, yeah, no, there was and nobody. I mean, in fact, we were we were a bit of a we were a bit of outcasts. We were looked upon as being very strange. Actually, I'm not. I'm, I'm not kidding you. You know, it's I them, remember. It's them mad ones that play <laughs> yeah, that sort of trad yeah. music. It wasn't very fashionable at all then. Yeah. You know, yes, you had your hardcore people who were into it, but I think with the with the explosion of folk music in the in the late sixties and early seventies, yeah. that changed a lot, and a lot more people became interested in it particularly in Ireland, you know, so, and uh, uh, I think with people like the Chief, and I grew up listening to the Chieftains and the Botley right. Band, and, and those were all the Van Clanksy, of course. So those, th that was a great grounding for us. And then we, we, we changed tact, and uh, I think it was just the youthfulness in us, you know, we yeah. wanted to, to, to play a different kind of music to, to what our parents were, were, were listening to and playing. And uh, we, we, hence I, I, I sort of bought an electric guitar and I sort of delegated the, the instruments out. I was was John it sacrilege he, in the house though? Was, it, was, was your dad saying, because I know your dad as well. Yeah. <laughs> no, he was, he, both mum and dad, I mean both mum and dad, both of them embraced I think what we were doing. And, yeah. and, and uh, uh, having that eclectic mix of music, my father could, could understand what was going on. So he thought it was great and mum thought it was good. They, they were marvellous, they really, really encouraged us. Yeah. They, didn't, they didn't say, look, they said, if you're happy doing this, that's the main thing in life, and, and they really did encourage us to. And that that foundation stone is what a musician needs, isn't it? You know, uh, well, I need... think so. You know, we were just we were just so obsessed by music. It was mm. there was either there was a couple of things you could do when you were growing up. When I was, uh, you could play football, or or, or play <laughs> music, and, and that was it. You know, so we, we did a, a little bit dabbled in a little bit of both, but we found the music was more rewarding. Well, I, I didn't bother with <laughs> the, well, I, football. Just no ball boy, maybe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just. Football was out for me. It had to be drums for me. But come on, rock. 
Yeah, yeah, kicked so, on to the rock then. Yeah, we we we, we changed over in, 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 to doing that. There, I suppose it was just with the influence of uh, a little bit of television and stuff like that. We thought we'd like to try it, and it was a great. It, I mean, it, we were very fortunate because uh, <clears throat> there wasn't many people around where we lived that yeah. were actually into it at all, and uh, so so we were kind of we 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 sort of as as a little group, my brother John and Tommy, we just formed the band and went went out to the shed and just started. Start playing. Start playing, and and we just did covers like, mm. of, of you know we'd get, we'd get friends coming up to say, do you know any Black Sabbath? And we're yeah. going who? Yeah, yeah exactly. But you yeah. see, what people don't understand is then, and we're talking about the late seventies, yes, mid to late seventies. Yeah. Then there was nothing. No, no. There was no, there was no music television at all. No. There was no pop music radio station in Ireland. Nothing like that at all. Nothing. Uh, so absolutely. Top nothing. of the pops once a week. Top of the pops once a week, and if you were lucky, uh, you might see the old group whistle test. Yeah. And, and that was, you know, and you'd only watch out for the band you were in. And it's funny because when when we when we sort of got into the whole rock thing, the punk explosion was happening, mm. but we weren't interested in it. Yeah. We weren't interested in that end of it at all. It was the it was the the more the rock bands like Thin Lizzy, of course Rory and or uh, Rory Gallagher and all those bands were very influential on us. And of course, uh, we we seen Rory as as. Uh, God. A rock god. Yeah. I mean, he was the he was the first real rock ambassador. He was the first superstar yes. rock musician to come out of Ireland. And I think, to be fair to Rory, he laid the path for everything that has come since. Well, you know, of course, you know the famous quote, but you know, the, the the viewers will know this that somebody said, I forget who it was, said to either Eric Clapton or Jimi Hendrix, "How does it feel to be the world's most famous guitar player?" And they said. Ask Rory Gallagher. That's right. Yeah, it was at uh, the, the Isle of Wight Festival. Yes. And uh, that's where that quote came from. Yeah. So, so that just goes to show you how good Rory and was. And how you know. respected he was. Yeah, uh, oh, absolutely. No matter where I go in Europe now, and I travel all over all, all over Europe presently, and the first thing out of people's uh, mouths come is that Rory Gallagher was just awesome. Yeah. And it's funny, we were playing... Um, some years ago in, in, in Chicago and, and uh, the first thing uh, we were playing in this club, Buddy Guy's club actually, and uh, the, the first thing the guys down sitting down at the bar said, do you know that Rory Gallagher guy? And we go, yeah, man he sure got the blues. So that was about the best endorsement you could, that was about the best endorsement you could. That's your Olympic gold. Yeah, it that certainly it. was. You you know, know, that so, is fantastic. So Rory was, was fantastic. It was people like that and we just started then, then I think somebody came up to us and said one night we might have been playing in, in Enniskillen or whatever, you know, you know, to success, seed in this music business, you need to write your own stuff. And we went, oh, really? Yeah. You know, so that's when the seed was, was, yeah, was set. Yeah. And it's funny that we're talking about uh, writing stuff. So we, we, we went out to the shed and we started to muck around with ideas and stuff like that there. And out of that came uh, uh, the, 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 a drum solo, yeah. believe it or not, that Tommy did. And that was the first thing we ever actually recorded. Uh, uh, and it was it was called Hitchhike, and it was like an instrumental drum solo, and it was a, it was like you had the instrumental with the music first, and then the drum solo took over, and it was sort of of its era, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and that's how we got uh, introduced into doing that, and then somebody said, you know, will you need to get on radio and stuff like that there, and it's funny that we're here talking this because it's thirty years ago now since Needle in the Groove. Thirty years. I think we have a bit of a surprise for you here now. Have we, it's it Needle in the Groove we have, Dave. Yeah. But this is from 2011. Ah, oh, right, okay. Right, so we're just going to play a bit of this because there's loads of stuff we want to talk about. But just play a wee bit of this thing to make it look like. Now, look at this. this still, this, this is this is your animal. The whole story is coming up. Well, my lady, she loved to move when the needle's in the groom.
Pat was telling me why that was on, that that was for, that was for Philomena Leonard, for Phil's mum. That's right, yeah, that was, uh, uh, it was recorded in Vicar Street and it was, uh, it was uh, the anniversary of Philip's uh, dad. You know, they yeah. have a gig every year in, in, in Dublin. Smiley Bojo. Yes, Smiley. Smiley, yes. yeah. Smiley, uh, Smiley and, uh, and the whole gang and it was just, a, it was a real honour for me to be part of that because we actually did the last tour. Yeah, with, yeah. with Finn Lizzie before they split up, you know, so we were we were on that, we were just starting out, we were on the crest of a wave at that time. And, and well, that's it, I'm just going to come to that, because when it did kick off, Mamma's mm. Boys, it kicked off. Oh, it did, it kicked it's, off. It's, it's certainly, it, it's funny, you know, it, it was peculiar, because that whole new wave of British heavy metal, to call it, right? Yeah, yeah. We were the only Irish band I'd ever to get signed. Yeah. They, they signed Iron Maiden, Def Leppard, all those bands came through, Saxon, and we were the only bands from our. And these are all acquaintances of yours. Yes. Yeah yeah, yeah. 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 You know all these. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 We 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 gigged and and, and toured and, and and knew all the guys and so they were all signed and we were the only band from 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 Ireland that actually got signed during that. So we were. The, it was quite an accolade actually to get signed because right. because it was part of the whole. You know, getting there was the exposure and then we went off. But again, them. I have to say because I remember that. Yeah. <clears throat> Mama's boys have signed. Yeah, you know, yeah. It was it was big it, it news. Was, well, it, it was, was it was massive was, news, and it was very difficult because it was. It, it, it's not like it is now, where you have the internet and, and and Facebook and all that stuff. There, I mean, we were bashing about in the wilds of Ireland, and it, you know, you try telling somebody, you know, Geffen Records, David Geffen yeah. flew in to see us. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and I mean, try to get him to go to Donegal. Yeah. You know, it, yeah. it, it, it's not so hard now, but then it was impossible because you hadn't got the, the, the kind of the internet and, and the yeah. media of that exposure. So it was, it, you really had to do a lot of talking to convince them and they had to listen to the demo tape. And, and so they actually flew in and it was, a, it was we, we signed a Jive Records in the end, which ended up being on Sony in, in, in France, Sony in Japan, Arista in America. Yeah. We were actually there when they signed Whitney Houston. We met her that day. That's incredible. It, it was that's, bizarre. That's, and they said, this is a new artist who's going to be really big. And we go, oh, yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. As, as, as you do. <laughs> and we didn't actually know. So, so it, it, was quite a, it was quite an accolade to do that. And, of course, we, we went on then. A lot of the stuff we did, when we played in America quite a bit with Bon Jovi and, and Rat and Tristan Rush. And all those bands, we, we toured a lot of it in and America. these were mega at the yeah. time. These yeah. were mega bands. This was, these were mega tours. But we were doing, we were doing no less uh, than... I mean, we did Nebworth with Deep Purple, and that was 120,000 there that day, and that was great to be part of that because it was, they got back together again for the yeah. first time since they split up. So there was 120,000 there that day. Meatloaf was there, the Scorpions were there. It was uh, a Blackfoot with it. It was just a, 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 it was a crazy but time for us. I have to say, Pat, that you, you weren't the boys in the back. You were up there with them. Yes, you I know, know. You weren't, you weren't just, you, you were guests. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, you I were, mean, uh, we, we did, uh, I, I didn't realise it at the time that we had actually made such strides. It, it was just like another gig to us and all we wanted to do was play yeah it was like wow this is fantastic you know and we were up there with our heroes i mean oh yeah i mean it was a bit like wayne's world you know we were it was it, <laughs> it was fantastic you know so so i suppose for three lads to come from 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 Derry lynn and to, to get where we went we went on to japan where well we hold were. on let's let's have a look at these three lads dave's got some photographs there for us that we're going to just have a look at now look at that that's <laughs> that is fantastic that is not that incredible uh, that's that's that, that's Paul's, that's Keltus now, isn't that's it? That's right, yeah, yeah. That These was are fantastic. That yeah, is. yeah. That, that. And Keltus, that was that was right. There. Look at that. That's classic. Yeah, yeah. But just Keltus very quickly there. I remember them being on BBC Two, and there was great buzz. Yes, there was a big buzz. It yeah. was it was it was happening like it, this. it really was. It was bubbling under as they say. It, it, it was yeah. I mean, we done the we done the Royal Albert Hall. We done you know it was it was fantastic. We, it was going really really well, and uh, but sadly. It, like many the thing, uh, there was there was a change in direction and a change in 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 the record companies. And when that happens, the people who signed you and believed in you are no longer there. There comes in new people, and they, they just want to change things around. So you can be you can be the the you know the recipient of of for want of a better word of of somebody changing the the, the rota in, yeah. in in the record company saying this is our priority now, and their priority became a ban. Um, I can't remember who it was. It was somebody like um, uh, Jim Marquay or something like that. There. Oh, so, so they took it completely. Yeah, yeah. You know, so so they they just seen it in terms of of how many pieces of 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 uh, wax or CDs they could sell. They didn't see it in terms of being you know music or, or, or artistry. They don't they don't they don't they don't think like that. No, yeah. you see, and this is this is the problem with this business. That I'm always saying to people that they see you and they see you on stage with Deep Purple with. 
Rubber Plant, Led Zeppelin, whoever, mm -hmm. and instantaneously they think, "Oh, she's a maid." Yeah, yeah. Well, that's not the case. This yeah. is definitely not. Mm -hmm. You know, even when you when you when you sign a, a record deal, really, it's it's if you want to put it in layman's terms, it's no more than going into a bank and getting a bank loan. The bank wouldn't give you the money because you're musicians, but the record company will, and that's basically what they're doing. Oh yeah. You yeah. know, so oh. they're allowing you the the vehicle to to. to to, to put it out to the public there and see see if they really like it, you know. And and, and to many extents it was working. I mean, the album <clears throat> went in uh, to the top 100 in Billboard magazine in, in America, you Which know. Which is... You know, and that incredible. takes a lot of sales. Oh, yes, yes. And, and you know, it, it was doing really well, but unfortunately, there, there's always a, a, a sting in the tail. And uh, unfortunately, our, our nemesis was that Tommy was ill mm. and we knew that from the very beginning yes yeah. uh, uh, Tommy was diagnosed when he was seven or eight with uh, leukemia and uh, we we always knew that that was going to be a problem because he spent many years in hospital and uh, up until that point so when but to came, your credit to your credit you kept the oh we did the, the, the nucleus of the thing we we wanted to do that because that to us that was his lifeline mm. and and he as much as said it to us at the time yeah, yeah. you know without the music he did nothing you know Ex so exactly so i mean they couldn't really understand uh, why tommy survived as long as he did because at the time he was diagnosed there were six or seven other kids with the same exactly the same problem and they were all gone within six months and again, so, I remember it very, very well. It so they, very, and they very... really could not understand it. They used to bring him up to the Royal in Belfast and, mm. and, and have him up there and, and all the student doctors would say, well, you explain it to us because we can't explain it why he has survived mm. and the rest haven't. We, they got the same treatment, they got the same, and he used to say it was the rock and roll. Well, it was. Yeah, you know, well, absolutely. And, yeah, absolutely, totally, totally believed in that. There. People don't believe every week that I say I'm 73. Yeah. It's the rock and roll. It, it's the, you know, and a, a lot of people don't realise he was on tour in America with Russian and Bon Jovi at 15, 16 years of age. That is incredible. Isn't you know, and, and he was doing the, he was living the dream. He was doing, we were doing stadiums out there. And, uh, and was, two final point, but he lived his life. He, he lived his life. He really loved every second of it. And it was, you know, he was very fortunate in a way as well, because uh, he, he, he hadn't, the opportunity to really grow up it, it was one big bubble he was in all the mm. time and it was it was just fantastic and but the three of us we kind of lent on each other quite a bit and and uh, you know we we were, we were always a family separate. nucleus oh, and yeah. it's it's funny where that I've been, I've been in bands with families before and you can get away with an awful lot more slagging and putting down because you get away with it because it's your brother and you can say hey you Oh yeah, we did. I mean, yeah. we had we had, we had major major rows and and, and fights and and uh, roadies would know to clear out when we were going to have a row. And it would That's... generally be over the music. It was never over, but you know, personality yeah. clashes. Yeah. It was always something got to do with the music. Somebody wasn't happy with so or they felt somebody wasn't performing uh, as well as we should have. And we used to all give each other yeah. a hard time, a oh, really yeah. really hard time. <laughs> but that's how we kept pushing it. That's it. You know. So from our point of view, it was it was amazing. I mean. I remember uh, we were actually in Switzerland doing a first tour. Uh, uh, it was a small little club tour, and we were due to go with White Snake um, uh, out on, on on the road with them. Were you asked to join White Snake? I was. And it's he? Yes, yes. Uh, this man was asked to join White Snake. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, what it, happened there, Pat? Did, well, we were. This is, we were in Switzerland actually doing this little club tour, and the, we were hanging out at a record shop as you do yeah. during the daytime. Mm -hmm. And we were discovering all these records. We had befriended a friend of ours called Peter over there, a Swiss guy. And we were in just hanging about in, in, in his record shop. And a phone call comes through to his shop. And it said, uh, and he lifted the phone up and went, uh, it, it's uh, somebody from White Snake's office. And we go, <laughs> yeah, right. And they're looking for you. And I said, you, you, what? I said, is this a wind up? And yeah, he yeah. said, no, 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 no. He says, no, really. He says, yeah, I think you better, you ought to answer this. You know, and what it was was his, was David Coverdale's office, White Snake's office, and they, they actually said, "Look, you know, we know you were coming to do a tour with us, and uh, we we listened to your album, and we love the way you play guitar. And David wants to know if you'd be interested in coming over to London and joining the band as one of the members is leaving." Oh my God! <laughs> so so, I, I had a bit of a dilemma there. So I said to the lads, uh, I said, uh, "Thanks very much, Mr. Coverdale, but no thanks." <laughs> And he never forgot it. He, Tommy met him three or four years later on when we started to do well in America, yeah. in LA. And he says, your, your brother turned me down 
David Coverdale yeah. said this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he said, so he remembered, you know. But it was a lovely accolade, but there was no way I was going to leave me, you know, my yeah, brothers, yeah. you know. Of course. Or something like that. And then in later years, then uh, I was going, we were going to form a band with Paul Rogers uh, from, from Free. <laughs> Uh, we were going to be called The Law, and it was Kenny Jones on drums. Right, awesome. Uh, Pina Pala, Pina <laughs> if you know who these people are, if you don't yeah. know who these people are, switch off. Yeah. Kenny Jones, The Who. Yeah. You know, it's just... Um, and uh, Pina Palladino uh, on bass, on me bass. on guitar, and Paul Rogers singing. And uh, we were going to be called The Law, but uh, as, it, as it transpired, I was going to actually back out on the road again with Mama's Boys. We had signed a new record deal, and we had a live album coming out, and I thought... Once again, you know, it was it was best to, to to keep it within to what I knew, and uh, it was a lovely accolade. It was again, it was lovely to be even considered for it, but it never really was a, going to be a. Yeah. I never was going to lead the lads, you know. So so from that point of view, it was. I suppose the opportunities were there, and I could have taken them. Oh but, yeah, but you but, know, it brings us sort of slap bang to twenty twelve yeah, now, you know. Yeah. Because. Water under the bridge and all the rest of it, you know. But now Pat McManus is back. Mm. Pat McManus band. It's funny because I hadn't really intended to do that. Yeah. I, I, I came home to, from London, and I just wanted to take it a little bit easier, do a little bit of teaching music, and 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 just take life a little bit slower. And then suddenly I found myself uh, getting caught up in the in the whole music industry again. But it's much different this time because. It, there's no record companies involved in it. Yes. There's no there's so there's no outside influences. And believe you me, there's a lot of a lot of pressure. You know, w when you talk about that, at one stage, you know, there was 14 people on the road with us. Yeah. And I'm going. Oh, hang on a second. I'm responsible for all of these. Oh, yeah, They're getting yeah. the And it just suddenly you're feeding gone, them. You're feeding them, and 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 it became a lot of pressure on me. And it was album tour, album tour, album tour. And I was finding myself in hotel rooms in. In, in the middle of the Midwest in America, right at two o'clock in the morning, I thought, hang on a sec, this can't be right. This, the, you know, it was a lot of pressure. And uh, when I came home, I, uh, I, I decided that it would be nice just to, I never stop writing because yeah. I, I, to me, that's my hobby. That's the way I, 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 I don't go out and play darts or kick football. Oh, yeah, yeah, I, just, yeah. I just love to, to write music and just for my own benefit, as long as I'm happy, yeah. I really don't care what anybody exactly, else Exactly, yeah, that's exactly so, You know, it's for me. It's your really, bag, yeah. You know, and uh, uh, fortunately a lot of people like it and I found myself getting back into it, but it's it's much more on my terms now. Yeah. So Which is fantastic because you, you, it has, it's working. Yes, I know. It's working I mean, better. People don't really, I just, I was just two weeks ago, I was with Robert Cray and Cahors in the south of France doing a festival there with him. I've been over to Patrimonia. Uh, it's called Patrimonies in Corsica with Tom Jones and Iggy Pop and the Beach Boys, <laughs> you know, and it, it was... I'm going with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was beautiful. What a lovely way to, you know, to make yeah. music and yeah. lovely, beautiful summers even. All the bands are mixing and chatting and talking and, back, and, yeah. and have and really lovely, lovely people. And for me, this is what music was always meant to be about. You jam uh, a couple of weeks ago, we were with the Scorpions out in, in France. Uh, doing a festival with them, so for me, I've seen their pictures, I've seen them yeah, on your own. So it's lovely, yeah. it's just, and it's there's no there's no real pressure now. And it's funny, but the gigs are coming thick and fast, yes. And it's funny because a lot of people have been asking me in Europe, you know, for when are you going to do a DVD in Ireland? And yeah. and, and that's it, that's what the, the, the conversation comes around to. Because uh, a couple of weeks ago, I actually recorded the first ever live um, uh, music that I've ever done in Ireland, I've recorded elsewhere in Europe, in Switzerland, yeah. America. Never in Ireland. Never done anything in Ireland with Mama's Boys or 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 um, or with the current PMB band. Yeah. So from my point of view, it was it was the opportunity. I thought I thought about it. I thought, well, thought Neil and the Groove's thirty years old now. It would be nice to actually record you've, a live gig. You've written an anthem though, Pat. Mm. It's 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 up there. I know it's funny. Greatest Irish it, records. It, any funny. any of them compilations that come out. Yeah. Greatest Irish hits of all. I it's know there. it's lovely, and it's, you pick it up and you look at it, and you say, "There's our lads yeah, down the road." Yeah, that's right, and it's lovely to be. Uh, I'm, I mean, I'm chuffed. Uh, I'm always chuffed about it, you know. And I'm never. He would say, "Don't you get sick playing it," you know. And I don't play that many Mama's Boys tracks during the night now yeah. because I, I mostly play all the new newer material that I write because I like to feel I'm moving forward. But then again, uh, I also like to, you know, acknowledge the fact that there's a lot of people are my friends that yeah. are out in the audience there, and they've of come course. to see it, and, and it's nice to play them. They bring them back to their youth as well because it was special to them. It, who's, your, when, who's your band members now? Uh, you better mention them. Uh, Paul Falloon on drums, he's from Dungannon. Dungannon he's yeah. the drummer. And Marty McDermott from Drogheda, he's the bass player. And uh, we, 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 we tour all over. In, in fact, uh, in a couple of weeks' time, we, we head off to Europe for another six or seven weeks' stint. We start off in England, going to 
to Holland and Germany. So I, I recorded the live album in, in Drogheda and uh, hopefully the release date for the, the new album will be in Whelan's. I'm going to do a, a launch for the DVD there. We'll be able to cover Whelan's that. We'll be able to, I'm telling the boys now that It'll Mark be fantastic. That in. We'll yeah. be able to cover that definitely. Yeah. Live. On September the 20th. Definitely. So I'm doing launches elsewhere and then I go to Europe where I launch the DVD there right. as well. I'll tell so you, let us know when that date is and we'll definitely go up. We'll oh, yeah, we'd, we'll, and the whole we'll, up we'd love to see you there. It'd be fantastic. Yeah, what about what other dates now? Because they're starting to whistle in me in. I can even hear Sally. Who, hello. All right, Sally. <laughs> she, I can hear her. She said, say hello. Hello. That's Sally's the boss. Anyway, show, show us this poster. Now, this is for London. Now, this is, this is a gig coming up in London. Yeah. I think, uh, oh, they are London, the borderline. Yeah. 16th of October. Mm-hmm. What other ones will be coming up now? Oh. Actually, the borderline, I know the borderline well. Mm-hmm. Well, we do. Um, it's funny because we, we, we skip back and forth all the time, but you know the borderline. But, yeah. but that, that's actually at the end of the English tour, and then we go into Europe. But before that, we're, we're, we're playing around Ireland here, and we actually do the Harvest Blues Festival in Monaco. Monaco. That's soon. Yeah. That's soon, yeah. a, 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 in the end of September, beginning of October time. So it's it, we and we gig around, you know. So so it's it's an, it's, it's all going. It's an ongoing process, you know. And I love playing music. To me, you know, I'm a musician. That's what I do. It's there's no big deal about you're it. You're on the road, yeah. You're on, on the road, road all the time. And we we get a full list of dates off Sally, and we and we'll publicise them next week. Um, have we have more photographs there before we, we like pack up because I'm being told to let you go. I don't want to let you. I want to keep talking. I will do it again. We we'll, uh, we'll definitely come in. Look at this now. This is the band now. This is the PMB band. This is fantastic there. Yeah, well, I remember. You know, it's funny. I remember you playing and, yeah, and, and, I... and us and us coming up to see to see you because we heard about you guys playing. You oh, know? So <laughs> we were going out to check the the opposition and I remember uh, meeting Paul Myers and Martin McClary yeah. and and they were all great great guys. Yeah, yeah. You know. So, so it was, it was, Still going. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know, which was lovely though, because yeah, yeah. you know, there wasn't many bands like us around at the we time. We were the rock foundation, yeah, then. yeah, yeah. Well, Blue Angel was myself, my brother Phil, and Paul Myers, that's right, Jim Dunn, that's right, and Matt McClary, that's right. This is from the Rory Gallagher Festival, look at that, that's a marvelous festival, that is brilliant. That's it brilliant really photograph. is a lovely weekend on there, that's and, fantastic. Uh, it, it's, it's, uh, it's a, it's, it's an international festival now because they come from all over Europe and America to. Uh, to all over the world, in fact, to that festival now. So to pay tribute to the, the great man himself. What's Pat McManus' ambition now? Uh, what if somebody does come along now and say, come on, we want you, Pat. There's a... No, you know, I think I'm quite happy playing the music the way I am. I, I live my life the way I want to live. You're your life. own man. I'm my own man and I don't have to sort of get up in the morning and, and, and somebody tell me what to do and I quite like that, Yeah. you know. I was always a bit of an old reaction. Well, there's somebody <laughs> with you, though, and she's in the next room. <laughs> I think uh, she, she might have a word or two to say about that. Well, she's the man. As Sally, my wife, is the manager, and between the two of us, we, we enjoy it, you know, because... You have a great team there. We have a great team, and, you know, the, the, the payoff is on, on a nice evening in the south of France, and you've just done a festival, and you're sitting there, and you think, this is lovely, you know, yeah. this, this is what music was meant to be about. So. Well, just before you go, Pat, Mama Kaz in Belfast... Ah. She was home with me a couple of weeks ago. And she's in love with you. Sorry, Sally. She's in love with you. <laughs> she's in love with you. So you better say hello. Oh, Mama Kaz up in Belfast. She played with Van Morrison now in the uh, September, I think. Oh, well, good luck with that. You never know if I'm not going to run a makeup to see it. Well, well, we'll arrange that. No problem. <laughs> we'll arrange that. We can get a minibus. Yeah, yeah, get a we'll minibus. We'll go off. Yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't <laughs> be the first time. 30p. <laughs> 30p each. All right, uh, Pat McManus, the legend that is Pat McManus. Thanks, we, I want an hour with this man. I want to. There's so many people, so many events, so many things that happened in his life that we didn't get to talk about. So I'm uh, going to have to say goodnight. Pat, thank you so much. Thank you, Paul. Thanks and for having me. We will definitely have you back. And many thanks to Sally for all her help as well. Thank you. Good night, and we'll see you next week. <laughs>